The heart of every man craves a great adventure, but life doesn't usually feel that way. Jesus speaks of narrow gates and wide roads, but the masculine journey is filled with many twists and turns. So how do we keep from losing heart while trying to find the good way when life feels more like a losing battle than something worth dying for? Grab your gear and come on a quest with your band of brothers who will serve as the guides in what we call the masculine journey. The Masculine Journey starts here, now. Welcome to Masculine Journey, the 2019 edition. Robbie, it's 2019. I know, it's like Christmas Eve. <laughs> it is, like 360 some of them, I think. Yeah, but it's but like it that. actually is an Eve. Do you know what Eve it is? Columbus Day? I don't know. What? Well, in, in t- um, January 6th is the 12th day of Christmas. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a day of Epiphany, I think it is. That's the day that traditionally they celebrate the wise men. Um, Are you I saying Epiphany Eve? Epiphany Eve. There we go. <laughs> yes, we created a word. Maybe I can use it on words with friends. I'll have to try that one out. It's going to be worth a lot of points. But yeah. <laughs> it's the Epiphany Eve. Yeah, I hadn't thought about yeah, that. Yeah. That's very good. There, there we go. So we have an Eve getting in there. Now I need an Epiphany Eve. Yeah. So yeah. the holiday season isn't technically over until tomorrow. There you go. So that's when I usually wait and take down my Christmas lights. Because <laughs> I tell myself, you know, I've got until the 6th. Right. I've always done that traditionally. And my wife drives my wife crazy. But I said, we still got two more days of Christmas. That's right. So many people think the 12 days of Christmas is leading up to Christmas. But now it starts. It, it does. It does. And we actually had uh, two of our boys were born on, on January 6th. And that's why I was kind of afraid we were going to have a third because three wise men. <laughs> like, Man, I don't know how I can do that. God, thanks for the break there. But yeah, I'll just enjoy the two you know, right now. But uh, no, we're, we're talking about a really cool topic that we started last year talking about. And, and then last week, we kind of ended last year's topic on it. But Robbie, why don't you share a little bit about what we're talking about today? Yeah, it's, it's an idea of an advanced word. And I know a lot of folks come into the new year with resolutions, and that's, you know, that's very typical. But um, John Eldridge started this a number of years ago, and I, I along uh, several of us have taken up on it, and, and it's really, really an amazing thing to ask God, okay, you know, what, where would you like to go in this upcoming year? And, and literally ask for an advanced word uh, that would be a word that we could walk together with in this year. And so, you know, we did that last year. And we, you know, kind of revealed where we went and how that happened. So we thought it'd be really fun because several of us have heard our word now for 2019. And it's not too late, by the way. You, you know, you can get it in February for, you know, whenever you get it, believe me, you will enjoy it as, as you travel through the year with God in it. Now, you've been doing this for a couple of years. Right. I've actually done it for three. Yeah. Yeah. This is your third year. And then last year, you brought a couple of people along with you. And we call that, saw that kind of manifest throughout the uh the band of brothers, how God kind of intertwined all those things. Mm-hmm. You know, I was not one of those that participated <laughs> last year, but I will be participating this year. I've already gotten a word. Um, and kind of interested to see how God not only works with us individually, but works with us collectively. That's what's cool. Yeah, it's really cool to see how he, he, he's got that all master planned out already, and we just get to see it kind of come to, you know, part of the fruition throughout the year, which is really pretty cool. But we're going to go to a clip here, and this is from uh, Jim. This is your clip. From Bruce yeah, Almighty. It is, which is one of my favorite theological movies of all time. Mm-hmm. And there's good theology in there. But this is this clip is right as Bruce is meeting God, but figures he's a janitor playing tricks on him. And uh, there's a, a good dialogue here between them. I'll get around to it. You install the clapper? No, but catch a jingle, isn't it? Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off, the clapper. <laughs> Just can't get it out of my head. Man. Well, good luck with that. I'm going to go now. Okay, but the boss will be right out. You must be Bruce. I've been expecting you. This is hilarious. So you're the boss and the electrician and the janitor. Must be a killer Christmas party. (laughs) Don't get drunk, though. One of you might need a ride home. (laughs) (laughs) You always were funny, Bruce. Just like your father. He didn't mind rolling up his sleeves either, son. People underestimate the benefit of good old manual labor. It's freedom in it. 
Some of the happiest people in the world go home smelling to high heavens at the end of the day. All right, what is this? How do you know my father and how do you get my pager number? Oh, I know quite a lot about you, Bruce. Just about everything there is to know. Everything you've ever said or done or thought about doing. Right there in that file cabinet. <laughs> That's kind of a scary thought on its own. Yeah, and that was a scary filing cabinet. I mean, yeah, it was. Something just hit me in that clip I'd never heard before. And I was talking about this being a great theological movie. Did anybody else pick up on the Trinity? It's the boss, father, the electrician, which sure sounds like the Holy Spirit giving us power, and the janitor, Jesus, who cleaned up our mess. So... For what that's worth, which is next to nothing. Uh, actually beautiful. <laughs> Great observation. Um, I, I picked a funny clip because often when God speaks to me, it's funny. And last week you guys were talking about how you had, you had your word you lived with all year and you loved it and you didn't want to let go of it. And I won't say I was at the opposite end, but I was almost, oh, good. We're going to let go of listening because I didn't, you know, if, if, God was grading. I might have gotten a D plus on listening <laughs> last year, but I went to pray, and we talked about this what, the week, three weeks ago, maybe four, that this was going to be the topic coming up, and I prayed about it, and immediately got the word. I said, "Well, that was too easy, so let me look at some other words." And I went to uh, the first one I went to on my own was perseverance, and. I was thinking, yeah, but that's and that's something I need to work on, but that's not very exciting. And then I went to peace, although I would have used the Hebrew shalom because I love that word. And I had this P thing going on, and ultimately uh, I got the perseverance came from two weeks ago. My wife and I were wrapping presents, and well, maybe it was three weeks ago. Anyway, right before Christmas. I already had the word that he'd given me, but I was still looking for another one. And our first show was coming up. Our next show was coming up. And I decided, well, I need to have it tonight so we can prepare for the next couple. And, and I was wrapping presents with my wife. A uh, short version is not a real pleasant experience for either of us. I hate <laughs> wrapping presents almost as much as I hate buying presents. I'm a typical Scrooge from that perspective, you know, I love the music. I love the worship. I guess I'm trying to sound godly and putting on a mask, but uh, that's really not a pose. I do love Christmas, and I hate the commercial part right. of it. But I w we were sitting there wrapping presents, and I was saying, okay, patience should be my word because I'm getting my, mad at my wife over next to nothing. And... The patience wasn't the word either, but the word was presence. Not the kind we were wrapping, but it is God's presence. But that one, it really is an extension, and I think we mentioned this last week, but we've talked about it, that our work, words are growing on each other. And I went from listen to presence. And in presence, I want to be in God's presence, and I want to be present with others. Part of listening was, you know, not trying to figure out what I'm going to say and not doing what I want to do, but it's really being there for other people. And I want to do that for my wife. I want to do that for you guys because quite often I'm checked out and somewhere else mentally and presence is both mine with others and God's with me. Wow. Thank you. I, um, we don't have time to go to another clip before we go to break and, and I didn't have a clip for my word. So I'll just go ahead and, Go ahead and share my word, and it's it's kind of similar to Brian's word that he shared, but it's not quite the same one. Uh, last week, Brian talked about having the word believe, right? Well, when I uh, asked God, he said belief, and I'm like, okay. And, and honestly, I'm a little anxious in a good way, I mean, and, and kind of nervous in another way because I'm like, okay, is God going to really, do I have to question what I truly believe this year? You know, what are my beliefs, and, and what's that look like? Is that going to be through trials? Is that going to be through different things? And and it's already starting out with a way of, okay, God, I just got to step out into this word and trust, right? That it's, you know, you got me. 
and and that's part of that whole thing is what do I truly believe? What's my beliefs? You know, and I know it's going to be an exciting year. It's probably going to have some challenges with it, like every other year does. But but I'm excited to see where God takes me in my understanding, not only of the Word, but my understanding of Him. You know, right? That's the that's the treasure is that it, He's going to reveal Himself to you in things that you didn't see before, and that, that it's going to be a cool year coming up. And I'm excited to hear actually <laughs> about your beliefs and and kind of where God takes you along those lines. How fun is that? I mean, it's. I'm excited. Um, you know me. I, I uh, if you guys who know me, I, I worry a little bit sometimes, and so this is one that I just got to say, okay, do I really have the beliefs that I have? And, and if I do, and I, I do have them at my core, God, I know you got it. I just got to kind of be engaged and go along for the ride with you and see exactly what you have in store. <coughs> um, speaking of going along for the ride and some really cool things, we got a boot camp coming up in just a couple months. Right. I know it seems like it's a long way away. Probably it's March, what, 21st through 24th? Exactly. I actually got the date right. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of a new thing for me. Yeah. And, and so uh, the boot camp is a really cool time for God to just not bring you a word, but a series of words or something that he wants you to know. Corey, this last boot camp that you had was pretty pretty impactful for you. Yes. <laughs> it was it was life-changing. And for anybody out there that's questioning, you know, is it worth it? Should I do this? If you're on the fence, I'm telling you, it it's life changing. It's worth it because I didn't want to go. Uh, honestly, I didn't. But you know, I just said I needed to. Something just told me, just go. And you're never gonna hear God spoken about in a more real and relatable way than you will at a boot camp. And it was like I said. It, it changed my life. I'm forever thankful. I'm trying to get anybody that I know to come this time. You know, I'm trying to get my dad. I'm trying to get my brother. I'm trying, my my best friend. And because I know just how changing and life changing it was, and I know the how my eyes were opened and how my heart was opened there, and I've experienced it firsthand. And I'm telling you, it's worth every penny that uh, you you could spend on it. Believe me. Um, and I can't wait. I'm so excited to go back. It was really cool about that story, the, the rest of the story as we, we go into break. But, you know, the enemy tried to take you out pretty early because the only two people that you knew weren't there. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we both got taken out one way or another. But go to register now, masculinejourneyradio.org for the upcoming boot camp. You can do it for yourself. You can do it for someone else. It's a great present for a birthday coming up for whatever, Valentine's Day. Just go get one. For, Hi, this is Sam with Mask and Journey. I'm here with my son, Eli. We're going to talk about ways that you can help support the ministry. One way you can go to smile.amazon.com. There's information on our website there on how to do that. Then you can go to facebook.com where you can click the donate button. Or you can go to masculinejourneyradio.org. Once again, look for the donate button. Or if you want to mail something in, mail it to PO Box 550, Kernersville, North Carolina, 27285. What God does at Masculine Journey Radio Boot Camp. When I first got here, I was kind of closed off. Didn't really want to talk to anybody because I thought I was stupid. I didn't believe. I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like each person who spoke kind of chipped away at this feeling I was having and chipped away at this mask I was hiding behind. I've never heard anybody speak about God and Jesus and the way we're supposed to feel like you guys have this weekend. What a gift. $199 Masculine Journey Radio Boot Camp. Go to MasculineJourneyRadio.org. Working out, losing weight, maybe using tanning spray, becoming more attractive in general. Reading more, watching less, learning all the rules for chess, becoming somewhat smarter in general. Eating fish, not fingernails, volunteer to save the whales, becoming a better guy in general. Saving more, spending less, yes, I will wax my chest, dating more girls in general. <laughs> okay, Robbie, what, what, what's up with the Those bumping resolutions? Music? Oh, resolutions. Yeah, there we go. We're, it's the first of the year. We got resolutions. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's we're, good. This is an alternative to that. Yes, it is. Well, why don't you go ahead and explain why it's an alternative for us? <laughs> well, yeah, we're talking today about our advanced words for 2019, asking God, you know, where, what's the adventure for me? Give me a word that I can, you know, chase after this year with you that you will take me on the adventure and. I was really excited to hear your word, beliefs, 
and and man just the stuff that could be involved in that and 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 um the word presence uh, you know that's a present that that's beyond understanding so you know it was really really cool to me almost beyond cool when i was talking to Corey this morning or excuse me this afternoon about it that you know here he is you know f- fresh in the faith and already hearing from god a- and he heard a word for 2019 and the word i'm going to share <laughs> i'm kind of jealous again what a word yeah i'm you're jealous of it i i thought the whole time as when i first heard you speak about your word the, I instantly was like, that sounds really cool. You know, that sounds 10 times better than like a Christmas resolu- or New Year's resolution. So I started, you know, praying on it. And after a couple of days, uh, I just kept getting love. And I'm like, that's so cliche. Like, that's just, you know, that's just so <laughs> cliche. That can't be. But I just kept getting brought back to it over and over and over again. And it just started making so much sense to me for me and my life, my past, my present, my future. And I, there's just so many different ways that I think this can go. And I'm really, really looking forward to this year um, with this word. And yeah, I just, like I said, there's just so many different pathways that I'm just excited for. And you have a clip. I you do are. have a clip. So, yes. so, so tell us about this clip. I've not actually seen this movie and I, I'm sure that maybe Brian's seen it. I don't think anyone else has seen it. It's, yeah. It's a it's it's a movie called Crazy Stupid Love and basically the guy that you're going to hear speak his name's Cal and his wife um has left him um because he fell into that that trap that you know some men do or where we just stale and you know just going through life kind of floating just going with the routine you know sometimes marriage can become and um he meets Ryan Gosling and gives him a makeover and all this stuff and try to teach him how to become a man and he really finds himself in you know, reinvents himself and you, his son Robbie has, is supposed to speak at a graduation and he's given up on love because of seeing his parents divorced and he loves this, this girl that's older than him. It's, and he's just kind of given up on it. So Cal interrupts the speech that Robbie's giving about how love is dead. So my son, not him, my actual son believes in grand romantic gestures. He believes in the existence of one's soulmate. And it's easy to just look at a 13 year old and say, you don't know what you're talking about. You are wrong, but I'm not so sure. I met my soulmate when I was 15 years old. We went out for ice cream. After my dad started teasing me about my first date, the way dads do, And I told him, Dad, it's no big deal. I'm going to be going out with a lot of different girls on a lot of different dates. And that is the first time that I ever lied to my father. (laughs) I met my soulmate when I was 15 years old, and I have loved her every minute of every day since I first bought her that mint chocolate chip cone. I have loved her through the birth of my three perfect children. I have loved her even when I've hated her. Only married couples will understand that one. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't know if it's going to work out. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm sorry, Robbie, I can't give you that. But I can promise you this, I will never stop trying because when you find the one, you never give up. Do you have anything you'd like to say? I still love you, Jessica. (laughs) And I love you, Emily. I love you ever since you first changed my sister's diaper. <laughs> I gotta watch the movie now. Yeah, and it's yeah. a really good movie. I'm a sucker for rom coms, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know that clip for me, it really, 
I found that on a whim, but I do love that movie and I've watched it over and over again. And, and when we started thinking about the word and how it relates and trying to find a clip for the show, it just kept, you know, that just popped into my head instantly. I don't know why it just did. And, um, I think that you can take that clip and, you know, aside from, you know, a wife or, you know, a soulmate, you know, apply that to, to Jesus and the God. And, you know, I don't know what's going to happen this year. I don't know what's going to happen on my walk. Nobody does. Nobody knows what God has in store for them. Nobody knows what, you know, Jesus is going to, you know, send us on this upcoming, you know, tomorrow or, you know, a month from now. But all we can do is love God and keep trying over and over and over again to seek what he wants from us and to seek, um, you know, what he needs from us. And when we talk about love, for me, number one, obviously, is going to start with learning continuously how to love God mm-hmm. every, each and every day. Two, and most and not more important than loving God, but for me, loving myself, that's something I've struggled with my entire life. I mean, I'm going to be honest, a couple months ago, I hated myself. Didn't want to look in the mirror. Um, and then, you know, loving others, um, this is something I struggle with on a daily basis. Um, you know, everybody's made in God's image and we're supposed to love our brother and our fellow man. And I struggle with that a lot. You know, people annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> well, why are you looking at me, Corey? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But um, just getting hatred out of my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I'm excited for this year. I think it's, it's there's so many ways that, um, that he can take me down this path and I'm just I'm I'm looking forward to it that's very cool that is very cool I one of these microphone hogs Corey that really hit me the clip was great and the guy actually gave the answer he said he couldn't say that you'll be together but if you never quit you do and I'm gonna my life word is love but I did it in Hebrew, so it sounds more spiritual. It's chesed. But one of the, the best definitions, and it's God's love, the everlasting love. The, one of the best definitions I've heard of that, though, and this will address how you love yourself, how you love others that are jerks, like Sam. Uh, <laughs> Sam right. is it's not good. a jerk, guys. I wouldn't say that if he was. But chesed's definition that I heard at a seminar on that years ago and and what ended up making it my life word was it is the person that has everything giving everything to us who have that deserve nothing. I messed it up a little bit, but true love in the way God does it is really a matter of it's not the feeling we have, it's a decision that I'm going to give you everything I've got. And that keeps marriages working, friendships working, it does. all the rest. Thank you, Jim. You know, Robbie, we need to uh, go ahead and get to your clip because we've got just about four minutes, I think, left, about three minutes. Yeah, well, based on where this is gone, I can. can we, we've heard it. the clip before. Um, the, the word that I got this year, which was a springboard for my word, last year was prosperity, which I didn't realize that prosperity had to do with grasping on to God with all I got <laughs> and letting him, the kingdom go advancing forcefully as I'm essentially holding on to his leg, you know, like a little boy, you know, being carried by his father. But my word this year sprung into abide. And, you know, I've had a real fun time here the last few months. Well, you know, really the last six weeks, maybe, um, getting more acquainted with the Hebrew alphabet. And the, the, the second letter in the Hebrew alphabet is bet, which means home, house. And, and it has a lot to do with the word abide. It's, it's very clear in that word. And, you know, it's an interesting thing that, that God abides in us and we can abide in God. And there's all sorts of things that did, I did not realize that are in there that are really going to be an adventure for me to figure out because it's kind of cool like in order to continue to 
enjoy the prosperity that I did this year, if I can abide further, I realize that, you know, I can go on this amazing um, journey together with him and my brothers who are, you know, clearly loving and, <laughs> and, and in his presence and, 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 and seeing the beliefs that are behind all that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really a cool thing. And I, I wanted to give Brian a chance as he um, had something that he wanted to share about, you know, where we are going this year. Yeah, I just wanted to encourage anybody who's listening, if you do have a family, um, kids, take them on this adventure as well. Um, They would really like to be a part of this as well. Don't just do it on your own. Um, You know, we have something hanging up in our mudroom, you know, that shows all of our words for this year. And it's really cool to see that even the, six-year-old kind of get into it and really and you know get involved it's, so i would just encourage you to to get your family involved as well how fun is that yeah it's pretty cool yeah so what's his word uh well w- we have a list of them and i'd love to say that i know it but i don't so <laughs> i mean he, he knows it that's he what knows it yeah. yeah so well i just um, think that you know it's really really amazing and, and that 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 you know how fun to enjoy that adventure with your son and and uh, you know begin to follow up with him yeah it uh, takes it to a different different place to see how god will use the family collectively mm-hmm. you know on those series of words let it end with the band of brothers well we do have a boot camp coming up robbie it's march 21st through 24th i am getting that down it's only taking me like 11 years to figure this out on how to do it or nine years but yeah march 21st through 24th go to masculinejourneyradio.org register now but don't wait till then to ask god for the word ask him today ask him tomorrow keep asking him and and i promise you he's going to give you a word and maybe you'll go is that really it or maybe you go wow that is it but god's got one for you so ask him today and go register for the boot camp coming up 